Okay, today we have probably we've had several, you know, really stunning cases on this series that we're doing with the unseen therapist and so on. But this one uh, really near the top. And I'm joined here by Sonia Novinsky. Sonia, say say hello. Okay. Hi. All right. Hi, everybody. It's a uh, cancer related case, mm -hmm. and we're labeling it the impossible lung cancer recovery. Now, just by introducing Sonia, Sonia is the uh, director of my of the Gary Craig Official EFT Training Center in Brazil, speaks both Portuguese and English, um, and has been responsible for many, many uh, astounding um, re recoveries and healings, et cetera, using the unseen therapist, which is our latest our latest advancement. And this one revolving resolving involving cancer. Mm -hmm. The doctors were telling this 44 year old lady that the it was so far gone that they couldn't do much with it. They wanted to take out a an entire lung. I, I've got that right. Yes, perfect. In fact, they actually attempted after you've done some work with all a lot of work with all this and this lady, and we'll talk about the details here shortly. What they did was they went ahead and operated, but they couldn't find the cancer. It was gone, except for maybe one little spot that yes. they went ahead and took out as long as they were there. But it was to them, it was a miracle. Where, where, where did all the cancer go? And, and so on. I said it right? Yes. All right. So let's go back to the beginning, Sonia. Um, the... Um, from, an, from our point of view, from the optimal EFT point of view, the cause for our diseases, including cancer, is largely emotionally involved. It's people carrying around anger and they're carrying around guilt and they're carrying around fears and stuff that we all collect over a lifetime. And these things manifest physically in different ways, including cancer, multiple cirrhosis in some cases, Parkinson's disease in some cases, and, and on and on it goes the list okay but in this case early on your client had i'm going to use the term suspected cancer around age 18 for cancer in the womb uter uterine cancer am i right yes they didn't suspect they think was just some mass formation there uh, we don't, i don't know in english if there there is a mioma in portuguese i don't know in english okay it's like a mass formation they want to take out but they didn't suspect or they didn't investigate okay if there was a cancer or not okay um it turns out there there was a cancer there um starting the early age. So we're going to start looking at cause for a moment. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's, that's really important here. It's, it's, it's one thing to address the symptoms and use chemotherapy, for example, or remove a tumor. That's, you know, the, the tumor is actually a, to, to our way of thinking anyway, a, a symptom. It isn't really the problem. Yeah. It's a symptom. What causes the tumor? That's what we want to know. Okay. And so her background, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sonia, was that, I mean, she was criticized constantly by her mother and others and so on, but a lot of times her mother. And she became very submissive was the term you used. Mm -hmm. Always wanted to please her mother. And when it came to sexual opportunity she uh, was submissive and ended yeah. up having a child with a very irresponsible man correct yes all right she wasn't ready for the child she resented her mother's constant criticism the fellow left all of that so that's mm -hmm. a lot of anger in there which in this case eventually we think shows up as cancer. Fill us in on that. Did I say it right? Would you add something to it or? Yes. She, 
she has this problem with her mom. So when she found a man that wanted to make sex with her, uh, she went and she got pregnant. And then she needed to work because her mother said, you give me the, the child and you go to work to raise this, to pay for the child. So she went to work and her mother raised this daughter. And she was very guilty for this because the mother was putting her guilt all the time since yeah. was, she was a child. And she was a beautiful woman. So it was a way of uh, looking for love to accept invitation from men. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But here's this deep set guilt going on, which which eventually we've got to resolve or it's going to show up somehow, somewhere, physically in some kind of disease that most likely anyway. Okay. But time went on and uh, then she developed this in her 40s. She developed this lung cancer. The way you were using it, and I, you know, you have to excuse me because I'm not really a doctor and I'm not all that familiar with all these terms. Metastasis. Yeah, it was metastasizing, uh, but that that was from the uterine cancer that that had yes. gone undiagnosed. Yes, the, and okay. then the lung cancer was very severe, very rare, where and with few chances of healing. Well, it was the the, the doctors gave up. When you say few chances, the doctor, we don't know what else to do. We're going to try to take the lung out. Yes, for her to have some quality life in the end. And yeah. she was very, when uh, her husband called me, she was so depressed, so any hope. She just want to die. Yeah, okay. So... Your husband called you because he's the one that knew something about you or EFT. Yes, she didn't. She, she didn't know anything about this. She didn't know about. It. He did the course and he used to apply himself, and he couldn't apply on her because she was so depressed. She didn't respond. Yeah. Okay. Was so it, it, it was it was still the tapping. Stuff. He was using the tapping. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so they weren't familiar at all with our latest advancement, the unseen therapist, which is really the yeah. much more powerful spiritual healer within. And just as a digression here, uh, anybody who hasn't uh, uh, gotten good information on that, there are some essential links at the bottom of this video, uh, free newsletter, free intro ebook about the unseen therapist advanced training if you want it and, and so on is is there but anyway back back to the story she even though she knew nothing about this she was willing to work with you and i gather you worked with unseen therapist yes not not See, tapping no with her no tapping since the beginning i i knew that was so severe and so deep that only unseen therapists could really help because we have we had few months before the surgery so i wanted her to try not to have to take the lung out okay. so we went hard and deep in the events of her childhood and of her adolescence uh, to try to not have to uh, take this lung out and, and we we try to uh, use the light and use the unseen therapist and use the tenderness to uh, shrink the tumor. Well, yeah, and, and, and saying it again, the tumors are not really our view, are not really the problem. They are a symptom of the problem. Yeah. So what you're, what you're really doing is going back to these childhood mm -hmm. experiences we call them specific events and um and bringing peace, yeah bringing peace to those instead of anger and i'm guilty and and, and, and all of that which just ends up causing mm -hmm. 
lots of negative emotions in the body, which, which upsets the entire chemical balance in the body. Any doctor will tell you that. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, and it, hence, uh, eventually result in ailments of many kinds, including cancer. Okay. Yes. So you went to those causative emotions, the angers, the, all these specific, uh, this happened at this time, this happened at this time. And I had these emotions that da, da, da. you neutralize that. You bring peace to the system. Right. And as long as now, if the peace starts taking hold, which with quality work that you do, it does take hold. And when that cause fades, so do the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Like the tumors, the, the metastases and all of that, that the doctors were so certain was there and they had to remove her lung. Yes. Uh, now, that's, that's me summarizing it. Would you say it differently? Would you add something to it? Yes. Uh, we work about his, her lack of self-esteem because she needed to... Uh, to go to start some events where she was put in a very guilty place because she was beautiful and she had this uh, appearance that was everything okay, but in her inner self, she was very sad and she was very depressive and no hope because uh, she didn't have any healthy connection with someone. So this started when she was a child. So we came back to these events in her child where her, she felt so alone and having to fight so much to work and to do all the homework and to take care of her brother and no tenderness she didn't receive any tenderness yeah okay yeah i see i see often often with many people that that have a childhood that doesn't have a lot of love in it in fact it has abuses and rejections and things like that the child begins concluding from all of that that there's something wrong with me i don't care i'm not i'm not really lovable uh, and, and, and that's a big, I mean, it, it seems almost routine to them after a while because it's, they get that message so often that they, they believe all that's really true. And, and it's always kicking around in the background and always disrupting the chemical balances that need to be there. Okay. So it's no wonder these things these yes. ailments and cancers show up in these yeah. ways. So. And, and when you have this uh, shame inside and his sadness, the sadness inside and this uh, low self-esteem inside, you start creating a false self that you are proud, you are a good executive and you, you are very beautiful and you you create a false self and i yeah. think the somatization is very connected with this distance between what you are and what you show up for the others yeah it's like it's like you have a um, i'm just going to say that in different words like you have this facade that you want people to think about you but underneath all of that no there's something wrong with me but i'm going to cover it up with my facade a lot of people a lot of lots of people do that all right and there's a conflict inside what i'm trying to show the world and what's really in here conflict conflict and that also contributes yes because your immune disease. system goes down because you spend so and so much energy to show what you do are not feeling yeah yeah Okay, so uh, we've already talked about how all this ended, and that is the doctors, you know, going to take a lung out, but that was just going to give her a little more time, quality of life wise. They get in there and they find one little spot. How yeah. long ago was the operation with that one little spot, and then they closed her up? 
I, I think some hours, I think, because they investigate to see if there was nothing no, there. No, but... no, no, I don't know. I, I, uh, I misstated that. Uh, I mean, okay. how long ago did they? Ah, have how solution? long ago? Yeah. Ah, I think uh, one year and a half for two years now, two years. All right. Yes. And there's was been it, no... was in May uh, 19 or 20, I think. Okay. Or nine, two or there, three years. Yeah. There's, I mean, of 2020, May of 2020, something like yes. that. And, and it's now. No, I think it was before the, the pandemic. It was 2019. All right. And it's now in the middle of 2022. Okay. Yes. So it's been two or three years anyway. But there's been no recurrence? No. And she, each three months, she do a PET scan and clean. Nothing. Lungs working fine? Lungs working fine. She's working. She back, she come back to work. She, she feel, she sometimes is afraid because everybody was so sure that she was going to die. And she was so sure that she was going to die and that... Sometimes she, she wakes up and I am alive. I didn't die. Sonia, this is something you and I haven't talked about, but I want to ask you now. Um, that must, from your point of view, that must feel really good to be able to contribute to that kind of healing. Yes. Yes. To be a part of unseen therapist love is really the best moment of my life. All right. Well, with that in mind, um, I hope our listening audience, you know, really got a lot out of this. That's that's the purpose anyway. So um, until next time, we'll see you then.